returning to a true crime story that has shaken Philadelphia. Federal prosecutors have announced they will not file charges against narcotics police officers accused of lying on search warrants, robbing immigrant-owned bodegas, and sexually assaulting women during raids. The disturbing allegations were chronicled in a Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative series, Tainted Justice, that was featured in the Philadelphia Daily News in 2009. Even though the alleged police misbehavior led to dozens of lawsuits, 33 of which were settled by the city for $1.7 million, none of the police officers has faced termination. Joining us now from Philadelphia are Philadelphia Daily News investigative reporters Wendy Ruderman and Barbara Laker. They received the 2010 Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting for exposing this alleged rogue narcotics squad within the Philadelphia Police Department. Their new book, Busted, A Tale of Corruption and Betrayal in the City of Brotherly Love, reveals how they unveiled one of the biggest police corruption scandals in Philadelphia's history. Uh, great of both of you to join us. Wendy, I'll start with you. I know that a lot of the people you spoke to, some of whom received civil, civil settlements from the city, are very upset that federal prosecutors have declined to file charges against these four narcotics officers because they believe justice has not been served. Uh, what is your reaction? Why do you think they, they, they refuse to file these charges? You know, everybody's pretty puzzled over it. I've spoken with several former federal prosecutors, and they seem puzzled by it. And I think that the shop owners have every right to be outraged and upset and, frankly, puzzled. Um, some of them told me that they were never interviewed after they came forward in 2009 to tell us their story, which we then chronicled. Cold, sorry, in Busted, um, the book that we wrote, and um, they didn't interview them, they didn't call them before a grand jury, and when we interviewed these shop owners, they came from all different corners of the city, they spoke all different languages, and in the end we had 22 shop owners all saying the same thing, and we just thought that their collective voices would be very strong, and apparently the investigators didn't even hear all of their voices, didn't even bother to talk to them. And Barbara, we called the Philadelphia Police Department, they said they had no comment because they hadn't read the book, but the police union said uh, the newspaper wrongly cast the officers as rogue cops, saying it was death by headlines. There is still an internal affairs investigation going on. What do you think is going to happen? Well, what's happening now is the internal affairs department did rule that there were some charges that they should level against these officers, including lying on search warrants, giving gifts to some of the informants, and one of the officers a searched a van during a raid of one of the bodegas without a warrant. Those um, charges that are internal within the police department went to Commissioner Charles Ramsey, and he is has sent those charges to the officers. They have 10 days to receive them. And then he told me he would probably take direct action, which means he would either choose to terminate them or discipline them. But the head of the Fraternal Order of Police, John McNesby, has told me that he will fight for, through arbitration to, against whatever happens to them, whether they're disciplined or, or terminated, and he believes he will definitely get the, be able to get their jobs back and perhaps even get them overtime that they would have earned had they been on the street. They've been on desk duty for five years. Now, Wendy, this started because a shady, confidential informant drug dealer named Benny came to you to say he was scared for his life because of his relationship with one of these police officers. When did you realize that you were on to something big? We really didn't stumble upon it as a, as a really big story until I got a call from an attorney who said, you know, that officer you've been writing about, well, I have a client, he's Jordanian, he says that this officer and this particular squad came into his smoke shop, he owned a tobacco shop, still does, in South Philadelphia, they came in, they cut and sliced and, and destroyed his video surveillance system, and when the cameras went dark, they proceeded to loot his store of thousands of dollars. He had um, lottery cash around, um, and they took lots of cartons of cigarettes. And in fact, Internal Affairs did find that some of these officers gave cartons of cigarettes, wrongly so, to their drug informants, but did not say, or apparently it remains um, unanswered, where exactly they got the stuff from. And, and I believe firmly as do the bodega owners, that they took the stuff. It was, you know, right from the store. And so you found that they had terrorized uh, immigrants in these trumped-up raids, that they faked drug warrants, and in the case of an officer widely known to his colleagues as Boob Man, uh, this guy made a habit of sexually assaulting uh, Barbara, big-breasted in particular, female suspects. 
Yes, we found, uh, Wendy and I found three women who they said had um, been sexually assaulted, fondled, groped. Uh, one of the women said she had been um, digitally penetrated um, during a raid by a police officer named Thomas Tolstoy who is in this narcotic squad. Um, these women we found independently. Uh, two of the women uh, went on the record for us and actually did videos. They were courageous enough to do videos. Uh, one of the women, the last one, who um, said she was digitally penetrated, she actually had walked to the hospital that very night after this happened. They did a rape kit at the hospital. They ordered one. And Internal Affairs was made aware of this woman complaining and getting the rape kit. They pulled Tolstoy off the street that very night even though the, the woman could not identify him by name at that time because even internal affairs knew him as a cop who had had a history of this and had done this, and so they pulled him off the street. This really reads like, like a thriller, and, and it had to have been terribly scary for you given some of the places you went to. I know Barbara was hit by, uh, by a drug informant in the face twice. Uh, Wendy, and you received all sorts of threats. Yes, they, they had a chat site um, at the time where officers could go on and log on with their badge numbers. They called the site Dome Lights. It's now defunct, where, you know, they, they said that they hoped that Barbara and I would get um, killed or that we would get raped or that we would be set on fire and we'd mm. call 911 and nobody would come. They put my home address um, up on the site. And um, so we were, I think we were a little nervous, but I wouldn't say, I don't know if I would say we were scared during it, but we certainly did have nights where we walked out of the building um, late at night because we were working a lot of hours on the series, and we would see two officers waiting for us when we came out just to sort of stare us down and wow. make us, try to intimidate us, basically. Yeah, and finally, in, in light of that, you were working very long hours. The Philadelphia Daily News has suffered cutbacks like most other newspapers. Uh, I know it was a real struggle for the paper to give you guys the time you needed for this investigation. Uh, Barbara, how concerned are you that budgets are not going to allow this kind of important investigative reporting in the future in Philadelphia and across the country? Well, we worry about that all the time. I mean, I came to the Daily News in 93, and I think every year since then, we've been faced with possible extinction, and somehow we're still here, and it's still kind of, we're, wondered, we're wondering, like, how that happened. Um, we do worry what's going to happen to newspapers across the country and to our newspaper, obviously, but for right now, we, we just keep plugging away, thinking that we'll keep doing this work until they turn the lights out. Well, congratulations to you both uh, a few years after your Pulitzer Prize, but congratulations on the book. The book is Busted, A Tale of Corruption and Betrayal in the City of Brotherly Love. Wendy Ruderman, Barbara Laker, pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Time now to see what's trending on the web. Let's check back in with her.